relax the hand. So I'm not sure if uh, your provider explained already, but this test has a turnaround of three to five days, averagely. We've been getting it back fairly quickly, so we'll be in touch via email, okay? And if you have the One Medical app, it's super seamless. Band-aids are fine on the skin? Awesome. So we have uh, two machines here called centrifuges. So we do a little bit of a premature processing. Um, we spin it in the centrifuge and just pretty much extract the serum from the blood. And so we then send the serum to the lab where they do the more comprehensive testing. So yeah, it's kind of like a teamwork where we get the process started, but then the lab does finishing touches and then they email us the report. You put it in the machine, close it, hit start, and then it's about a good uh, 10 to 15 minute spin time. And so it would come out looking like this. So this is the serum part of your blood. These are the platelets underneath. And that gel that you see at the bottom there, that migrates to the middle in order to separate the serum from the rest of the components in the blood. And then once that like separates like that, then it's ready to be sent to the lab. Exactly, yeah. Sometimes they want us to send the tube as is, but for this particular antibody test, they need the serum portion of your blood. And so that's why we pop it into the centrifuge. At One Medical, our serology tests are all being sent out to LabCorp or Quest, depending on the insurance of the member or the person being tested. When LabCorp, for example, receives that test, most of the time they are using a test that is manufactured, the reagents and the machine manufactured by Abbott. That's the, the dominant uh, vendor for LabCorp right now. So that's the extremely high performing, 99.9% .9 specific, 100% sensitive test at LabCorp for IgG. So, uh, and Quest, I believe, is using something similar. The utility of the test really comes down to alleviating anxiety for a lot of people and giving them more clarity. A lot of times patients want to know if they actually were exposed to COVID. Maybe they were asymptomatic, maybe they had symptoms that initially they thought were just a cold, just a flu. So the importance of the test, on the one hand, is to give our patients more clarity, lessen some anxiety around their own health. The other useful fact of this test is that it can tell us a little bit more about the spread of COVID. So patients who maybe didn't get tested for the virus with the PCR test, either due to lack of availability or they didn't have symptoms, I think we're going to find that tracking the spread of this virus is going to be a lot more useful using the antibody test eventually. Say you have something that's 95% accurate or 90% accurate. That sounds pretty good, but it's not when you're testing hundreds of thousands of people or millions of people, you could have tens of thousands of inaccurate information on both ways. So you want something, honestly, that's greater than 99% in both of those measures. Let's take one of the uh, point of care tests, for example, that have lower specificity and lower sensitivity. Uh, let's say that they have 95% sensitivity and 95% specificity. So in that scenario, uh, and these tests are being used out there where people have, you know, maybe sort of a gray market antibody test that you put a drop of blood on uh, that they got from their friend, some good connection. In that scenario, it's really the false positive that would be the more worrisome and much more common uh, false reading. And that's because, again, the prevalence of the condition is so low. So with the, with the low pre prevalence condition, if the test tells you that you don't have it, you can actually be pretty darn confident that you don't. So the false negative rate we think is going to be pretty low with this stuff, but the false positive rate is what we're most worried about. And that's, what we're, that's why we're so interested in getting highly specific tests. For SARS and MERS, which are similar um, to the novel coronavirus, Presence of antibodies typically gave persons two to three years of protection. So that's a good sign. And in other instances like this, antibodies usually give protection. For how long? We're not sure. But if I had to guess, 
I'm going to guess that the presence of antibodies gives some protection if it's an accurate test. And I am telling people now, if you get a positive test, get another one somewhere else to make sure. So my bet is, and there was a recent study that showed uh, that antibodies probably do indeed give some level of protection.